Hi everyone, it's me, Coffee Sister. Okay, that light's not going to work. Um, oh, now it's really dark back here. Okay, I need to figure out lighting then. Um, okay, I guess it's actually not so bad. Um, Alright, obviously I'm coming to you from a slightly different location in that it looks like I'm at an angle to everything. Well, that's interesting. Um, so, this is the official new Stitchy Spot. It's the same room as before, um, but I have a chair and cabinets and things now. Um, oh, and I've got a Coke can that should not have... Oh, Dr. Pepper can. Um, and no, Katie, I'm still more Texan than you are. Because I say so. Um, anyhow... Um, so yeah, so this is, this is the new place, um, because there have been questions, um, that is a Life Magazine with Carol Channing from The Vamp, um, it is not a cross surrounded by cotton candy, um, it is not a giant caterpillar, it's not, it, it's Carol Channing, um, new edition of the collection is Miss Agnes Moorhead, so I have a stitching witch to curse away the frog, hopefully. Um, so yeah, so this is the new spot. There will be more of an official show-off of the new spot. Once I really get everything settled and situated, I'm still working on a few things, trying a few things out. But so far, I really like it. Um, and as you can tell, I have an odd light now. Um, so there we go. Um, alright, so we've got some haul, and we've got some whip updates, and, oh, I was going to do Teresa Little Stitcher's tag. Um, I'm going to have to find it again, though. Um, so how's everyone else's week going? Have you all had a good one? Anything exciting, magical, or wonderful to report on? Oh, well, that is interesting. That is very interesting. Well, okay, then. Um, I'm glad to hear that. All right, so those questions are pulled up for when I am ready for them. All right, so we'll do the whip updates first. This is Wine and Whips Month with Stitchmania. So my first one of the official entrance, was Blue Jeans and Daisies. Now, if you'll remember, also known as Whipsy Daisies, if you'll remember, I had two big motifs left and then a whole bunch of little motifs. And if it hadn't been for a few small hiccups, I would have actually finished all of part one. But here we go. Here is where I'm at now. So this is after a week's stitching. I did the squirrels, I did the honeycomb, and then I did all of the, all of this side. Um, so here is the chart, well, part three, because part one and two are up there for some inexplicable reason. Um, so the, the things I did, specialty stitch-wise, the leaves on the squirrels are Romanian leaves, um, which were a lot of fun to do. I did uh, long horizontal satin stitches that I think I'm actually going to have to go back and redo because they aren't looking so great. Um, so I will have to go back and redo those, I believe. And then I did lazy daisies for the bee wings. Um, and then up here in this little section, which actually extended past where part one ended, but I felt we were doing half a motif only when it was that big. Um, I used the square boss stitch in the middle of those flowers, which probably doesn't really look like much of anything. But that's the square boss stitch. And then down here, and I'm going to have to to take them out, and I'm going to wait and finish them after I'm able to do the bands above and below it. But I'm doing the feather stitch there, and then this is a laced running stitch on the bottom. But I'm going to go back and redo them. Partially because I'm not entirely pleased with how the feather stitch is laying. 
um, and partially so I can make sure it lines up all the way down the bottom once that part gets done. So I'm going to take those out. Since they're essentially just really easy chain stitches, it won't take me very long to, to do. So there we go. Um, I almost got the border finished because I was gonna, I'm going to wait and do the center panel, the center one, um, when as at the end, because I really would rather do it all at once. Um, so, but I was going to go ahead and try and do as much of the border as I could, and I got about half of what's there done um, before the week ended. Um, I had a few distractions this week that sort of took away from it. Not not bad distractions, just things going on, and the fact that I didn't get to stitch at all yesterday. Um, so there is where I'm at on Blue Jeans and Daisies. Um, and I'm going to show you some of my new organization too, which is a second. So this week will be the pickup on In the Fairy Tales book, which is the soda stitch um, that I'm doing with Angie and Kimmy. Um, the plan is to finish Alice in Wonderland and Snow White and be on to the next page. Um, so, and all Alice really has left is the rest of the tree, her hair, the mushroom, and the cat. And a cloud that I've got to fit in there somehow. Um, and then I'll start in on Snow White, who I haven't actually done any work on design work for, so I don't really quite know what I'm going to do with it yet. I think, by and large, I'm probably going to leave it mostly alone. I think I'll do some stuff to the house to make it look more like, I think, what they were going for. Um, but otherwise, it basically looks the way I would expect the house it looks like Snow White. So that one doesn't really require much work. Um, so there we go with that. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting back on this one. I've kind of missed it. So... Um, really, this Wine and Whips is more about going back to the things that I'd already started that I liked but hadn't been able to do. Um, so those are the Whip updates. Um, so I guess next up is some haul. Um, all right. So I've got... So if you remember a video or so back... Um, I posted, or I asked about looking for, um, needlework necessities thread, um, which has been bought out by Threadworks, and I had two people, or needle necessities, um, two people very graciously offered me, offered to look in their stash to see if they had the color that I needed. Um, one of them did not, uh, and that was Mom Dot Stitches. But she offered me, she said, I'm not going to use the ones I do have, so would you like them? And I said, sure. And the other one was Miss Cherry, who did have the color I needed. So thanks to the two of them, I got them, as well as a little bit of bonus stuff. So here is the actual Needle Necessities 140 Creme de Mint. It's a very pretty green. Use the back of her little note to me. So... Um, it's very, very pretty, um, and really, really, really nice of y'all. Like, I, thank you so much. Like, I was not expecting these extra things, and they're awesome. Um, Miss Jerry sent, um, several colors of Globo rayon fabric, and I haven't opened the package to kind of take it out. Um, I don't really know much about rayon, um, but they're all, they're beautiful colors, and they're just absolutely stunning. Greens and blues and purples and pinks and yellows and reds and a black that might actually go into fairy tales. Because I've been looking for a black for the witch. Um, and that red would actually be a really good ruby slipper. This may actually... Yes. Um... Oh, crap. Did I not bring those back? With okay, there's something else, and I forgot to bring it with me, it looks like. Um, so you'll have to hang tight real fast while I take care of that. Um, then, like I said, um, Miss Mondot Stitches sent me several, several needle necessities. 
um, as well as some other things. So, and there are officially color names for all of these. Um, a lot of them are in sort of the same basic color families. Um, which I thought was interesting. I'm guessing she got them for specific projects. Um, but there's several of these that are in sort of blue-white colors. Um, there's one that's a really cool brown, green, orange that looks very much like fall leaves. Um, a really nice orange yellow, which is coming up very, very yellow on here, and it's really not this yellow in real life. Like, not at all. Um, but it's also pretty on there, but it's really, really pretty. Um, the, uh, sort of a blue that has some purples to it. And then several in the purple family, which is, you know me, I love me some purple. Um, so there's this purple and this purple and this, which is sort of purple and green and this purple as well. Um, and then one really red one, which kind of reminds me of Buckeye Scarlet from, uh, from Channel Arts. Um, and they're just, they're absolutely gorgeous, and they feel really nice, too. I'm looking forward to finding places to use them. And then she sent me some others that she said she wasn't going to probably ever use. Um, these are two metallics, a black and a silver, pre-blended thread. I've never heard of, and I haven't taken the time to do research yet, but I eventually will when I have a chance. Um, then from Rainbow Gallery, Cresta de Oro, um, which is a thick, thick, almost, almost like a, like a number five pearl, I think, silver. Ooh, sparkly. And then two, and I'm, I'm not sure if, they're, one is called Encore, one is called Overture. They look almost identical to me. So I don't know if there's a difference in the line or not, but they're both by Rainbow Gallery. Um, so that was a very, very pleasant surprise as well. So thank you to both of you. Um, I can't wait to find uses for all of them, um, because I definitely will. Um, because to, and I hope she doesn't mind that I'm going to read a little bit from it, um, to quote from Miss Jerry, it starts with changing things a bit and ends with rooms stuffed with thread, fabric, bead, pattern, and magazine storage bins, boxes, and drawers. Yeah, it does. So, I can't, I could just kick myself for not having brought those with me. Um, all right, hang tight real quick while I run grab part of what I got. Uh, I can't believe I did this. I'm so silly. Okay, so I am back. Um, all right, ow, that hurt. Um, all right, I uh, put those there with this. Um, I don't remember now, unfortunately, who it was, but someone mentioned this Italian um, website that was an online store when I asked last week about designers. Um, and it's called, and I will find, oh, come on, work the way I want you to, phone. No. Right, so DHL. Ah, that was it. Um, the site is called Casse Sanina. Um, it's an Italian website. I apologize for the delay on that. Um, the uh, um, and 
mentioned that they had several designers that were similar to Madame Lafie, um, who I also discovered in love. I discovered several, and y'all are all evil, terrible people for enabling me like this. Um, that was not the right thing. Um, because I found several, several, oops, several that I really liked. Um, so from Madame Lafie, first I bought that. Scary Halloween. Um, and the cool thing about this is um, she, and since I don't mind it being out there, they, to help kind of cut down on counterfeiting, they put your name and your address on the pattern on every page. Um, I also got... And I don't remember for sure, did I put it in here or not? It was another Halloween. It was from Maggie Co's Village. Aha. Um, nope, nope, that's the actual chart. And I may have shown this to you last week, and if I did, well, you're seeing it again. Um, and she actually prints your information on the chart, like your address and everything, so I'm not going to show that, obviously. But, there you go. So, those were two of my, my two digital purchases. Um, anyhow, but comparing them to that, she also told me about this, this site, and I got two books from Mango Pratique. Um, one, Au Pays de Contes, and I'm pretty sure I mispronounced it, but it means fairy tales. Um, and it's got all sorts of things. It's got Snow White, it's got Rapunzel, um, it's got Donkey Skin, which is a ridiculous story. But, and I'm holding them far enough back that if anyone is able to copy this, then I, you've got amazing eyesight. Um, but they give you the charts and the little color codes, and there's a couple for each. There's Rapunzel. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't a Wizard of Oz, which made me sad. Um, Alice in Wonderland is in here, though, including the Dodo bird, which hardly ever gets represented anywhere. Um, so that was. So that's the. Uh, that's that one. And I got them in three days, because they shipped them via DHL, which, yeah, it was like 20 bucks, but still, three days for the impatient Garrett was wonderful. Um, and then this one, which is Contes de Fées, um, and it's got Snow White as well. It's got also some, like this, they're just little fairy tale motifs. Um, and again, no Wizard of Oz, but that's okay. Um, I really like some of those witches. Um, so these were, these were all pretty cool. Um, so, that was, that was that. Um, and then, see, I finally, I did order from Stitching Bits and Bobs, which she shipped very quickly. Um, just like Silver Needle, I got two little freebie charts. Um, one that's an Art Deco ABC, and one that's sort of a Quaker sampler that says welcome. The Quaker one is from Work Basket, and the other is From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. Um, I ordered my first... Oh, well, here, we'll do this, because this will fade into the next one. So I got my, my Plum Street Sampler Cereal Bowl Lesson 2. Um, it says, Ever Faithful, Ever Kind, Burn and Generous, Be Thy Mind. And it's got a girl walking a dog and a house. And it gives you some options for other country charts for the flags. Um, which I thought was really cool. Um, and then I bought my first By the Bay, which is Home by the Sea. Um, and I just absolutely fell in love with it. So today I had to go to my LNS to get a few things that I needed. So I bought Nantucket Village Part 1. And it's Part 1 of 5. I don't know when I'll stitch it, but I really liked it. 
Um, and while I was there, I got... So, and it's got a couple of really cute shirts in it. Um, I'm not as blown away by it as I was last year. I think the one I really like the most is Bump in the Night by Deborah Dick of Tempting Tangles. And that's it. I think that's really cool. I like the fact that the houses are on an angle. Um, so, and Brenda, uh, or Brenda, Belinda Carl's Nace of uh, Plum, or not Plum Street, whoo, of uh, Blue Ribbon Designs has two designs in here. She's got some trick-or-treat bags, which are super cute, and an ornament, which is really cute. Um, and then I liked um, one from someone I'm not familiar with at all. Uh, it's Gail Busey, and it's called Spooky Hollow Quilts. And how cute is this? I know. So, yeah, and I don't know if they're offering a digital, free digital copy this year like they did last year. Um... Oh, yes, they did. So, I can get a digital PDF copy, which makes me also happy. And then while I was at my LNS, I got a couple of things. Um, I bought the one week's dye works I needed for my By the Bay, for the By the Bay, the, because I had all the others for DMC. So, and I bought the fabric for it. Um, it's on going to be on 32 count sea spray, um, and it actually may be, I may have gotten, I probably didn't even need a full fat 16th, but that was the small size my LMS had. So I may be able, if I can fit it on this, then I'll have half that I can do another small on. Um, and I've gotten several really cute smalls from uh, the Sampler Life Facebook group that I'm really excited to try. Um, and then I got the fabric for my, for the Plum Street Bring Your Own Fabrics. This is 36 count, um, linen from Weeks Dye Works. And then for Watsits, I bought for Peter Pan's hair, tomato colored wool, um, because that's going to be the next square. I bought my little pearly petite beads that I need for the, the little stars that sprinkle through the project. And then for what will eventually be Tinkerbell, these sort of lime green petite beads, um, because Tinkerbell is going to be beads, because I really prefer, while I like the Disney Tinkerbell, I really prefer the stage Tinkerbell, where she is just a ball of light. Um, no bigger than your fist. Um, so there's, there's that. Um, oh, we're at 23 minutes. All right, so let me really quickly do Teresa's tag. Um, question number one, do seasons affect your stitching pattern, such as do you stitch less in the summer? Um, no, seasons don't seem to affect me. Um, what affects me tends to be just how crazy work's been, or things like that. Um, do I prefer stitching with a lap stand, on a floor stand, or in hand? I have a lap stand that I, um, that I use for really big projects, or projects where I don't want the Q-snap. But mostly I stitch with a Q-snap in hand. Um, I don't have a floor stand, so I don't know how I would like one. Um, which I guess is, do you prefer stitching with a hoop, Q-snap, frame, or in hand? I prefer the Q-snap, hands down. I do like the frame, but, um, I really do like the Q-snap. Hoops, I can take or leave. Do you use a stitching light or no additional lighting? If yes, do you use a floor light or a clip-on light? Well, my alt light is actually attached to to um, a caddy, and then somewhere around here, I'm not sure where I put it, but I've got a another sort of collapsing portable like travel style light that I used to use at my grandmother's. Um, 
Do you use a magnifier? I do not. I probably should, but I do not. Do I stitch one-handed, two-handed, or both? Um, one-handed primarily, when I'm on my frame, I will put my hand behind the fabric to help keep it taut, but primarily I'm a one-handed stitcher. Um, do I prefer to stitch alone in a quiet place or around family and in a living area? Um, I do a lot of stitching near my house, or not near my house, whoa. Um, I do a lot of stitching in my own room. Um, I will go watch TV with my parents and stitch with them. I also do a lot of Skype stitching with uh, some friends. So I kind of do a mixture. Um, when I'm really trying to focus, I find that actually I do better to stitch on Skype with people because they keep me focused. Um, what is my preferred fabric and count of that fabric? I prefer linen. Um, really, I like any of them. I really like 36 and 40, um, but I don't mind 28 or 32. I don't really like going below 28. Um, I do occasionally like Ada, but I prefer linen. Um, that said, I am getting the By the Bay sampler stitch along from this year, the Serenity Harbor, and it's really, really large and going to require a half yard of fabric, and even weave at my LNS is much cheaper than, um, linen. And since I need a half yard of it, I'm thinking I may just bite the bullet and try even weave for that. Um, in the time stitching, have you ever lost your stitchy bug? If so, how many times? And how did I get it back? Um, I haven't really lost it. I've gone through spell. Uh, I had, I guess, like one spell where I didn't stitch, but it was mostly because I was just too tired. Um, do you travel and stitch? Would I on public transport, or is it home only? Um, I do travel with it. Uh, well, did, now that I'm no longer going to my grandmother's and I'm not dating someone who I would take stitching over to there and work, and I'm not really doing it at lunch because I've scaled myself back to half-hour lunches and there's just not enough time. Um, I have traveled with it. I don't mind traveling with it. I don't really care what kind of looks people give me because, quite frankly, I'm awesome, and if they're going to look at me funny and think that I'm not awesome, well then clearly they're idiots. So, why would I care what idiots think of me? Um, so yeah, so there you go. Um, Teresa's tag. Alright, now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of my new storage boxes. Um, first, and this will be of particular interest to Organic Granny, I'm sure, I've got this little tin, it is an old toffee tin. And in it, on the lid, I've put my needle winders. And on the inside are all my beads. Now, the impressive thing about this, and this is a testament to Jeannie and Gina, metal tin, metal tin. That's how strong those magnets are. All right, so there's that. And this tin, this is the tin box of surprises. It's very difficult to get into. I just sort of grabbed this from my grandmother's crafting area. It's become a box mostly of finishing materials, but it had trims of all kinds and bias tape and some very old JP coats. Um, I think these might nickel plated needles. Um, as well as a metal embroidery hoop. Um, but one of the neatest things, and I took it out a couple of times to show people, was it came with this. Happy Home Rust Proof Needle Book. Nickel Plated 60 Assortment Golden Eye Needles and Threader. There's the package. And the needles. The threader is no longer in existence. Um, and I have no idea how old this is. But how cool is this? So, there's that. Um, I've got a coffee can with buttons in it that my mom did when she was in the second grade. Um, and then I've got this nice green cigar box 
that currently houses all of what I call my miscellaneous threads. So the things that I only needed for like one-off projects or I haven't used yet, but don't really go on bobbins and don't really go anywhere. That's what this box is for. So there we go. That is that. Um, now before I go, I have one other thing. Um, I think I've mentioned before that my grandmother and my mother both stitched. My grandmother mostly only did stamped cross stitch. We've got these two pieces, and I've got more that will be coming in, and I'll be showing you all in the next video. But we've got these two. There's a series of four. We have winter. And either spring or summer, my grandmother believes that this is summer. They're stamped. They're from about 1948, somewhere between 1948 and 1952. She got married in 1952, and she said she had de she definitely knows she did them before she got married. Um, and she got married at 17. So she's, And she said she was no younger than 13 when she started it. So that puts it 48 to 52, somewhere in there. She's fairly certain she got them from Ladies Home Journal, but they could have been somewhere else. I would like to see the other two. I would like to have a complete set. So, if anybody knows of a way I could find these or track these down, or other than just random eBay searches, um, that would be really, really, really awesome. Um, because I would really like to find the other two and do them. Um, or at least, if I can't find the other two kits, if someone has them stitched somewhere, and then I could at least see what the other two looked like, so that I know if I did spring or summer, or if she did spring or summer up here, that would be nice. Um, we definitely know that one is winter, though. So, anyhow, that is everything that I have on my end for this week. Um, I hope everyone is doing fantastically well, and I will see you all soon.